Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Marvel's Strongest Pupil Technique. Chapter 41. I don't know whether it was driven by anger or because Tony originally had good driving skills. In just 10 minutes, Tony drove the car directly to the airport, where there was Tony's private jet. As the top tycoon in the U.S. arms industry, Tony can be said to have considerable privileges in the military. Although this itinerary was decided on a temporary basis, Tony's private plane took off as soon as Jones arrived at the airport. Nothing, don't worry at all. With a speed far exceeding that of a civil aviation plane, Jones and Tony disappeared in less than one hour, and they had already appeared in Los Angeles thousands of miles away. As soon as he got off the plane, someone offered a supercar immediately. Quickly walking through the streets of Los Angeles, Jones had to admit in his heart that money is indeed a thing that can make people feel extremely happy, especially after being rich to a certain extent. An hour and 40 minutes after leaving the laboratory, and 10 minutes after the Disney Concert Hall party started, Tony and Jones dared to go outside the concert hall smoothly. Handing over the car keys and tip to the waiter at the side, Tony and Jones walked directly to the inside of the concert hall. Walking side by side with Tony, Jones looked at the people around him and said, Thanks to you, this is the second time I have attended such a large party. They are all upper class people in America. The name Tony Stark is not generally influential, it is just a simple distribution of benefits for firefighters, which has attracted a quarter of the business people in the United States. If everyone here dies, the entire United States will probably be in chaos. Hearing what Jones said, Tony nodded lightly, but immediately seemed to think of something, and a serious look appeared on his face. That's true, but, if something happens at this party again, I won't bring you here if I say anything in the future. Quote dot 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 quote. Hearing Tony's words, the corner of Joan's mouth twitched, his perspective eyes opened, his gaze swept over everyone in the venue, and then he directly locked on a beautiful woman with these photos. Sure enough, this guy, if I remember correctly, should be the reporter who had a one-night stand with Tony, right? Speaking of which, she also promoted the birth of Iron Man in disguise. A thought flashed through his mind, and Joan's face became serious. Although I really don't want to say that, I still want to say that I will disappoint you this time. What do you mean? Tony was taken aback when he heard Jones' words, his eyes widened instantly, he turned to look at Jones beside him, and said in a low voice, there's another trouble this time. That's not true. Jones shook his head lightly, and said directly, I just saw someone you will definitely be interested in. After ambiguously coping, Jones changed the subject directly and said, by the way, what happened last time, it seems that I didn't see any related reports. Hearing Jones asked about the last party, Tony's face became more serious. You were right last time, that killer is really unusual, the congressman is dead, but even I can't find out the details. What happened, the outside media did not reveal any news. Sure enough. Hearing Tony's words, Jones nodded lightly, with a look of understanding on his face. The current Hydra has not been exposed by Black Widow, and the high-level government has almost been corrupted by Hydra. Jones reckons that even the current government is less powerful than Hydra. Shaking his head slightly, Jones put this matter out of his mind, thinking about Hydra now is purely to add to his heart. Turning his head to look at Tony, Jones said softly, Okay, don't discuss that matter, you'd better go in quickly, there are surprises inside. What? Mysterious. Hearing what Jones said, Tony couldn't help showing a look of doubt on his face. However, even though he said so, the pace under Tony's feet was a little faster. Jones was quickly left behind. There was no intention of catching up with Tony. Watching Tony walk into the gate of the Disney Concert Hall, Jones turned around and walked in the other direction. Not far from where Jones was heading, a bald man in his 50s or 60s was talking to the reporters in front of him. Weapon manufacturing is only a small part of Stark's industrial empire. In addition to weapon manufacturing, we also have a great briefing in other aspects. For example, the protagonist of today's party, the fire rescue team, we provided them with the most advanced fire protection on the market, fire extinguishing equipment. Our relationship with them. Mr. Obadiah. Without any thought of listening to Obadiah's long speech, he walked to the back of Obadiah, and Jones directly patted him on the shoulder. 
When someone interrupted his speech, Obadiah couldn't help showing a trace of anger on his face, and he turned his head and looked back. Are you? Jones. Tony's savior. The moment he turned around and saw Jones, the expression on Obadiah's face immediately calmed down, and a bright smile quickly appeared on his face. Turning around and looking at the reporter behind him, Obadiah said directly, Sorry, I have important guests to receive, so let's end the interview first. Hearing Obadiah's words, the reporter couldn't help being taken aback, and subconsciously shifted his gaze to Jones, with a sad look on his face. Although Obadiah's news value is far inferior to Tony's, but as the number two mission of the Stark Group, Obadiah's influence cannot be underestimated. Badia's interview qualifications are now complete, and the interview has not yet reached the normal level, and the interview has ended early. Although there were some complaints in his heart, the reporter didn't dare to say anything at all. He nodded slightly, and the reporter turned around and left here. Watching the reporter leave, Obadiah then turned to look at Jones at the side, his face still full of kindness. Jones, I never had a chance before, I want to thank you very much, you helped the Stark group a big favor. Really. Hearing Obadiah's words, Jones narrowed his eyes and said directly, isn't your thanks already here? Huh. What do you mean? Hearing what Jones said, Obadiah was taken aback, and a look of doubt appeared on his face. It really looks like it. Looking directly at Obadiah's face, Jones couldn't help but sneered in his heart, no wonder he was able to deceive Tony for so long, this guy's acting skills are definitely not good enough, Jones estimated, if he if he acts in a movie without doing business, he is probably a actor level role. But, Jones took the initiative to talk to him, not to act with him here again. Staring straight into Obadiah's eyes, Jones said directly, how's the assassination game going? It was Tony at first, and then I. It doesn't feel good to fail. Hey, Jones. Obadiah was taken aback when he heard what Jones said, and said directly, what are you talking about? How could I assassinate you? You must have misunderstood. I didn't misunderstand. Jones narrowed his eyes, completely ignoring the sincere look on Obadiah's face. I'm very happy working with Ten Rings, right? I don't know what you paid for kidnapping Tony remuneration. Dollars, or weapons. Ten rings. Hearing these three words, Obadiah's face froze, and his eyes turned cold instantly. Where did you know that? Didn't Raza tell you? Hearing Obadiah's words, Jones sneered, and said directly, I carried Tony to the stronghold, and I was the one who was there for three months. Detaining Tony. I thought that Raza would tell you my information when Tony came back, but I didn't expect, your relationship is not as close as I imagined. Raza was the leader of the terrorist at the time. After being injured by Tony in the cave, he ran away, so he escaped the explosion by chance. At that time, the terrorists in the stronghold were only a part of Raza's subordinates, so although the terrorists in the stronghold were wiped out by Tony, his power was not weakened too much. Raza, that fool. Hearing Joan's words, Obadiah's face froze, and a gleam of coldness appeared in his eyes. However, Obadiah was Obadiah after all, and his complexion only changed slightly before returning to normal. Turning his gaze to Jones' eyes, Obadiah sneered, and said directly, it seems that your heart is not small. A good terrorist is wrong, and he followed Tony to the United States. Quote dot 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 quote. Hearing Obadiah's words, the corner of Jones' mouth twitched, and he didn't know what to say for a while. Good terrorists are inappropriate. It was the first time Jones had heard such bizarre remarks. Looking helplessly at Obadiah, Jones said directly, only a psychopath would think that being a terrorist is a good job, right? I'm just changing my way of life. Why do people always have to make trouble? Millions of dollars to kill a common man like me, are you so rich? Ha <laughs> ha. Hearing what Jones said, Obadiah chuckled directly, are you begging me for mercy? Maybe you should change your attitude. If that's the case, I might revoke the reward. Hearing Obadiah's words, Jones' eyes lit up, and his face was instantly filled with a smile, thank you. Huh. Hearing Jones's sudden words, Obadiah was stunned for a moment, and a trace of doubt appeared on his face. I mean, thank you for telling me that you posted the bounty. I wasn't sure whether it was you or Raza who did it, but now I'm sure. With a gentle smile on his face, Jones the words in his mouth directly turned Obadiah's face ashen. You're talking to me. 
Looking straight at Jones in front of him, Obadiah's eyes seemed to eat him alive. Calm down. With a smug look on his face, Jones' face was full of indifference. What do you want to do to me? There are so many reporters watching over there. Even if you are a director of the Stark Group, you can't shoot me with so many reporters watching. And. I'm Tony's lifesaver. Jones didn't want to force Obadiah to make a move in public. If I remember correctly, Obadiah should have an infrasonic weapon in his hand. Although Jones' physical fitness has surpassed Commons by a lot, Jones still doesn't want to experiment with the power of infrasonic weapons with your own body. Just a terrorist. Don't think too highly of yourself. Hearing Jones' words, Obadiah's eyes became more serious, but the expression on his face softened instantly. Obviously, Jones' words still have some deterrent effect on him. Don't think of yourself as the highest. Looking straight at Obadiah in front of him, Jones had a smile on his face. Although I guess you don't want to admit it, your status in the Stark group is still inferior to that of you. On Tony, you said what would Tony do if he knew what you did. He he, hearing Jones' words, Obadiah not only didn't have any worries, but also burst into laughter. Jones, do you think he will believe you as a terrorist, or will he believe me? Quote. Taking a step forward, Obadiah stared straight into Jones' eyes, and said in a low voice, I watched Tony grow up, and I single-handedly pushed the Stark group to where it is now. You think he will believe you if? Then let's wait and see. With a slight twitch of his mouth, Jones turned around and walked towards the inside of the concert hall. His purpose of coming here to find Obadiah has been achieved, and the effect is even better than he expected. He definitely wasn't going to tell Tony about Obadiah, and Obadiah's last words were right, he was more trusted by Tony than Jones. Even if Jones gets Obadiah's evidence and tells Tony about it, Tony's favorability for Jones will decrease a lot. That said, not just because of what happened to Tony and Jones before. This is true no matter if you are a genius or a common person, even if someone else is doing it for your own good, but he tells you a fact that you are unwilling to accept, you will feel a little repulsion towards this person in your heart. The matter of Obadiah can only be discovered by Tony himself. His purpose is to deepen Obadiah's fear of Tony and to make Obadiah act faster. Tony's Mark III has already been prepared, so don't waste too much time on Obadiah's side. Up. As soon as he entered the concert hall, Jones saw another person he knew. Looking at Phil Coulson who was walking out of the concert hall, Jones walked directly to Phil Coulson and said with a chuckle, Detective Phil Coulson. Hello, I didn't expect to see you here. Mr. Jones. Seeing Jones, Phil Coulson couldn't help being taken aback, it's just some business needs. I'm leaving soon. Oh oh oh. Understood. Hearing what Phil Coulson said, Jones nodded slightly. Glancing into the concert hall, Jones said softly, By the way, Agent Phil Coulson, have you seen Tony? He seems to have come in before. Oh, you said Mr. Stark. He's gone to the rooftop. Hearing what Jones said, Phil Coulson narrowed his eyes and said directly, You can just go to him directly, I'll leave first, and I have to report to the mission woolen cloth. Thank you. Watching Phil Coulson leave the concert hall, Jones walked directly to the roof. He definitely knew that Tony had gone to the roof, and he went with Potts. He asked Phil Coulson, just casually. The clairvoyant eyes were opened, and Jones looked at Tony and Jones on the rooftop, with a playful look on his face. Stepping a little faster, Jones took out his mobile phone directly from his arms. Hey, Tony, if you have something to do as a secretary, if you don't have something to do as a secretary, life is so chic. After today, I see how you still deny the matter with Potts. Thoughts flashed through his mind, and the smile on Jones' face couldn't help but become even more smug. And on the rooftop of at the moment, Tony and Potts are having a heated discussion. Looking straight at Tony, Potts' face was full of excitement. It's not just a simple dance between us, you are the boss, I don't understand. Don't understand what? Looking straight at Jones, Tony's face was full of inexplicable expressions. Everyone knows what kind of person you are, your attitude towards women, these are all okay, but the key is that you are my boss. If I dance with you, people will think that I am unscrupulous. Speaking of this, Potts swallowed lightly, and continued, they saw me here with you, and I was wearing a dress with an open back. You are so beautiful. Hearing what Potts said, Tony couldn't help but let out a soft drink. 
However, as soon as the words came out of his mouth, Tony himself was stunned, staring blankly at Potts in front of him, and asked you for a long time before finally softly saying. Really? Hearing Tony's words, Potts in front of Tony was also stunned, looking straight at Tony in front of him, Potts suddenly subconsciously moved forward. As for Potts' movement, Tony also seemed to have received some instructions, and with a movement of his feet, he took a step forward. The next moment, the faces of Tony and Potts got closer, and they were about to kiss each other within less than half a centimeter. But at this critical moment, Potts took a big step back as if he had been electrocuted. When Potts retreated, even Tony on the opposite side was stunned, staring blankly at Potts in front of him, Tony's fluent eloquence seemed to disappear instantly, making him completely at a loss for what to say. What a pity. After confirming that nothing should happen to Tony and Potts today, Jones, who had witnessed the most exciting part, came directly from behind. Hey. Jones proudly shook the phone in his hand, with a playful look on his face. Tony, I've known for a long time that you like Miss Pepe, but you still dare not admit it. What? I caught you now right. Jones. Why are you here? Hearing what Jones said, Potts couldn't help exclaiming before Tony could speak. After the words fell, Potts subconsciously turned his head and glanced at Tony next to him, and his face flushed with anger. Obviously, Jones just said that Tony liked her, which made Potts very useful, and they didn't even care about Jones secretly filming them. However, Potts didn't care, Tony was not so easy to talk to. Staring straight at Jones, the look on Tony's face seemed to eat him. Turning his head to look at Potts beside him, Tony smiled awkwardly, and said softly, I think I need to explain the principles of being a human being now. Do you want something to drink? I'll bring it to you later. A glass of vodka martini, don't make it sweet, add more olives, three more. No problem. Hearing what Potts said, Tony turned around in a cool manner, walked to Joan's side in two or three steps, grabbed Joan's arm and walked down. As soon as he left the rooftop, Tony couldn't help shouting to Jones beside him, Jones, what the hell are you doing? Don't tell me that your career as a reporter made you a professional habit. I'm helping you. Jones quickly rolled his eyes on the phone in his hand, and said in a low voice, don't you feel it yourself? Just now you too, how embarrassing. You don't need to make trouble. Hearing what Jones said, Tony's momentum weakened a lot, I know women much better than you. Do you want to compare Tony Stark's best assistant with those superficial models and stars? Turning his head and glancing at Tony, Jones walked directly to the makeshift bar in the concert hall. If that's the case, then you didn't say what I just said. Indeed, Potts is different from those girls. Hearing what Jones said, Tony instantly understood. But, even if this is the case, I still know Potts better than you. Twice the unsweetened vodka martini. A glass of three olives. Speed up. Quickly asked the bartender, Jones turned around and looked at Tony. I know you know Potts very well, but I don't know if you have heard a word. What? Looking at Jones in surprise, Tony couldn't help showing a look of doubt on his face. Love makes people blind. With a smile on the corner of his mouth, Jones reached out and patted Tony on the shoulder, and then said directly, Tony Stark, a playboy who has been wandering for more than 10 years, sometimes falls in love with someone. Such a rare things, why don't you just marry that person back home? Hey. Hearing what Jones said, Tony was taken aback for a moment, and a flustered look appeared on his face. After a few dry laughs, Tony said, today is a dance, and it's not too serious to discuss such a serious matter. All right. Quote dot 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 quote. Hearing Tony's words, Jones smiled slightly and said nothing more. Is today a dance? Jones clearly remembered that this was the third ceremony where Tony Stark distributed benefits for the Firefighters Association, right? Tony Stark. Just when Tony was in a daze, a voice suddenly came from not far behind. Hearing the voice, both Tony and Jones looked in the direction of the voice, and at the entrance, a woman dressed in costume had already walked behind Tony. Oh, you are. Kelly. Looking at the beauty in front of him. Tony was taken aback, and there was a hint of thought in his eyes. Christine. After Tony's words were directly picked up, Christine's face was full of mockery, you still came to such a place. How dare you? Ah, uh, what do you mean? Tony was taken aback when he heard what Christine said, and a look of doubt appeared on his face. 
It really looks like it, I was almost fooled by you. Seeing Tony's innocent look, Christine sneered, and never stopped mocking Tony. Hearing the conversation between the two, Jones couldn't help but shook his head helplessly. Jones remembered this beauty, although Jones had never seen it with his own eyes in this world, but it was in the original book. Christine, the beautiful reporter, interviewed Tony for a few words before he went to Afghanistan, and then fell asleep with Tony. The funniest thing is that when Christine saw Potts at Tony's house, she still acted like she was the hostess, but she was kicked out of Tony's villa directly. It seemed, quite embarrassing. And now, this guy definitely wants to vent his anger on himself, but Jones has no interest in watching this kind of thing. For Jones, apart from the information she is about to bring, this woman has no useful place. In a flash, Jones appeared directly between Tony and Christine, and grabbed the photo in Christine's hand as soon as he reached out. After flipping through the photos and confirming that the photos were the same as the ones he had seen in the original book, Jones turned around and handed them to Tony behind him. At the same time, Jones also said to Christine on the side, Okay, don't say anything that is useless, let's go straight to the point. You are the woman who was abandoned by Tony before, right? Want to hit Tony, I don't believe you didn't get your chips ready. You. Hearing what Jones said, Christine's eyes widened, and a look of annoyance appeared on her face. She was going to use this information to slowly mock Tony. Wrecked. Moreover, Jones can be said to have fully exposed her main purpose. What are these pictures? Disregarding Jones' words, Tony flipped through the quick photos, all of which were weapons made by Stark Industries. What? Don't you recognize it? You researched these things, genius inventor, Mr. Tony Stark. Hearing Tony's words, Christine gave Jones a blank look, and opened her eyes to Tony again, taunt mode. I know, I'm asking, where are these pictures? It's a small town called Gemila, have you heard of it? It was attacked by terrorists, and it has now fallen. Use the weapons you made. Quote dot dot dot. When was the photo taken? Yesterday. After a brief conversation, Tony fell silent, and turned his gaze to the photo in his hand again. Tony's expression didn't know what to say. Gamilla, how could he not remember this place? This is his real savior, Ethan's hometown. During the three months of being imprisoned, Ethan mentioned this town more than once. Although there are no relatives in this town, Yi Sen Sen is still full of nostalgia for this place. Seeing Tony's lost look, Christine couldn't help showing a smug look in her eyes. She stared straight at Tony, and Christine said softly, this is what you call responsibility. Okay. Without waiting for Christine to finish speaking, Jones interrupted her directly, the important thing is finished. Then you can leave. You. Glancing at Jones bitterly, Christine couldn't help shouting, I know you, Jones. Tony Stark's savior, I didn't expect you to be his follower now. Could it be Tony didn't tell you? Never offend a reporter. Hearing what Christine said, the corners of Jones' mouth twitched, and a sarcasm appeared on his face. Tony really didn't say such a thing, and he also offended a reporter. I think you have the most experience with that. I think. I don't mind offending once. As he said that, Jones moved his neck from side to side and made a few crisp clicks. I don't want to say it again, you can leave. Quote dot 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 quote. Seeing Jones' actions, Christine took a step back subconsciously, and a look of panic appeared on her face. If she was forcibly kicked out on such an occasion, it would be a trivial matter to lose face. She my career is probably over. Savage guy. Glancing at Jones again, Christine left a sentence, turned around and walked outside the concert hall. Brutal guy. Looking at the back of Christine leaving, Jones showed a sneering smile, and said in his heart, good evaluation, at least it's much better than some guys with virgin attributes. Tony, where are you going? Instead of paying attention to Christine, Jones turned his head and looked directly at Tony who was about to leave. I have something to confirm. Hearing what Jones said, the serious Tony paused for a while, and then walked out of the concert hall without hesitation, I did not approve the sale of these weapons. Without stopping Tony at all, Jones just watched quietly as Tony walked towards Obadiah outside. It's so hard, let Obadiah beware of Tony in advance, and then let Tony suspect Obadiah again. Why do I suddenly feel like a villain? There was a self-deprecating smile on his face, and Jones directly raised his hand. 
Two glasses of vodka martinis that had been handed over a long time ago. It's not polite to hang someone on the roof, although it doesn't seem like Tony has done it for the first time. With a smile on his face, Jones walked straight outside in Tony's direction with a glass of vodka martini in one hand. Although it didn't take long, the communication between Tony and Obadiah has also ended. Standing blankly on the steps outside the hall, Tony looked like a god, watching Obadiah who left quickly. It doesn't feel good to be betrayed. There is still room for redemption, isn't it? Walking quietly to Tony's side, Jones looked and followed Tony's gaze, but his face was still calm. Someone took something you didn't want to hand over. Then you destroy them. Mark III should not be rusted at home, are you right? Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. Hearing Jones' words, Tony's eyes lit up, and his whole person looked much more energetic in an instant. Turning his head to look at Jones, Tony had a grateful look on his face, nodded slightly, and said softly, I see, thank you, Jones. After the words fell, Tony didn't intend to wait for Jones to reply, and turned around to walk in the direction of his car. Hey, did you forget something? Seeing Tony's action, Jones was taken aback for a moment, hurriedly caught up with Tony in two or three steps, and stopped in front of Tony, leave a lady waiting for you in one place. Not a good habit, especially with a lady who is going to have a drink with you. Hearing Jones' words, Tony's expression froze instantly, I almost forgot. Exclaiming, Tony snatched the vodka martini from Jones' hand, and walked towards the concert hall. Thanks, Jones. Watching Tony leave from his field of vision, Jones raised the corner of his mouth slightly and murmured, you're welcome. Tony. What happened in the next time, Jones didn't stop. As soon as Tony walked into the concert hall, Jones left there directly and found a random hotel to stay. It wasn't until noon the next day that Tony called Jones, and the two returned to New York from Los Angeles together. As soon as he returned to his home in New York, Tony ran to his underground research room without any hesitation, and started the debugging of the Mark III. Definitely, during debugging, Tony didn't forget to turn on the TV to pay attention to Gmila's affairs. Indulging in the study of steel armor for a month, Tony felt as if he had lost touch with society. The area 25 kilometers outside of Gemila has become a purgatory on Earth. This is a new bloody colony. The nomads in the village were forced to leave their homes. They were driven away by warlords supported by a new force. The refugees could only lost in the wilderness, or left in dangerous ruins. And the culprit behind these recent atrocities is foreign militants who call themselves freedom warriors. With the report on the TV, Tony's face became more and more serious, and when Raza's figure appeared on the TV, Tony turned off the TV all at once. Turning his head to look at Jones, Tony's eyes suddenly showed a cold look. Jones, why haven't I heard you say that terrorists do these jobs? E.H. Jones' mouth twitched when he heard Tony's sudden words. Why did this guy suddenly turn his finger on himself? However, thinking of the figure of Raza on TV just now, Jones can also understand Tony's thoughts. Who made him a member of that terrorist organization before? Sighing lightly, Jones said helplessly, they weren't as arrogant as they are now. Didn't you notice that they already have Jericho missiles? Speaking of this, Jones paused for a moment, and then continued, to be honest, if I am still in that organization, you saw the photo of carrying ammunition yesterday, and the work of driving and lifting things into the car on TV just now, should be I'm the one to take it. Hearing Jones' words, Tony was stunned for a moment, and didn't say anything, but the coldness in his eyes disappeared instantly. Jones' status among the terrorists was very low. Tony saw it with his own eyes. Among other things, even Jones, who was staring at himself, had been working the night shift all the time. I really can't understand why a guy like you has such a low status in that kind of place. Shaking his head helplessly, Tony turned on the TV again, I don't doubt it at all. If you want to, you should can kill that terrorist leader. And then, hearing Tony's words, Jones curled his lips, with a look of disdain on his face, will you be a terrorist all your life? A small terrorist will be accepted by the United States, but a terrorist leader, even if it is yours. It's impossible to save face, I don't want to keep doing such a job with no future. Quote dot dot dot. That's true. Hearing what Jones said, Tony raised the corner of his mouth, 
and a smile couldn't help but rise on his face. What Jones said was not wrong. Although the United States was not the most persecuted, it was the United States that fought against terrorists. The most powerful is definitely the United States. If a terrorist leader says he wants to join the United States, unless he has some sky-high bargaining chip, it is absolutely nonsense. After that, Tony didn't communicate with Jones anymore, but watching the scene of Gamilla on TV, Tony's adjustment of the steel armor was a little faster in an instant. About half an hour later, the debugging of the Mark III was completed. During this time, Tony directly added two anti-tank guns and a small machine gun to the Mark III. These things are all Tony's existing technologies, and they just need to be installed on the Mark III. Afterwards, under Jones' watchful eyes, Tony walked directly to Jones' armor on the other side, looked up and down Jones' armor, Tony turned around and looked at Jones, who was staring straight at the TV, and said loudly, Hey, Jones, do you need any weapons on your armor? Ah. Hearing Tony's words, Jones was stunned for a moment, and a look of doubt appeared on his face. What do you mean? Am I going to? Why don't you go? Hearing what Jones said, Tony twitched his mouth and said directly, Your reward has been increased to $5 million. I think it might be done by your former boss. Don't you want to solve it? Is this troublesome? Quote. What you said seems to make sense. Hearing Tony's words, the corners of Jones' mouth twitched, but there was a thoughtful look on his face. He really wanted to tell Tony now that he had identified the person who offered the bounty, and it was Obadiah, not Raza. And, Raza won't offer himself a reward of 5 million. However, these words cannot be said to Tony. Sighing helplessly, Jones stood up from the sofa directly. You are right, this trouble should be solved. Let's go, I don't need to add weapons to my armor. Since Tony wants to go by himself so much, let's go, just right, although most of the people inside are wanderers, there are still a few good guys in ten rings, and they are also considered to be the common people. It's the strong one. Maybe, my eyes can still absorb some energy. A thought flashed through his mind, and Jones walked directly towards his steel armor. The process of putting on the steel armor was very fast. After a few seconds, the steel armor of Tony and Jones was activated directly. Looking at each other, the two didn't say anything. The injectors on the limbs were activated instantly, and they rushed out of the underground laboratory along the driveway. The town of Gemula is not very close to the United States, but with the intelligent program planning the route, coupled with the flight speed of the steel armor exceeding the speed of sound, Jones and Tony soon came to the sky not far from the town. Tony. Staring straight at a mountain peak that raised a large cloud of smoke not far away, Jones directly connected the channel with Tony, the explosion, was. It's the Jericho missile. Before Jones finished speaking, Tony, who was very familiar with the Jericho missile, couldn't help shouting, these dare to use this thing. Forget about that for now. Hurry down and save people. Compared with Tony, Jones' thinking is undoubtedly much clearer, turning his sights to the town of Gamilla. Jones' vision can be seen without the telescopic function inside the armor he could clearly see the chaos in the town. Having experienced the devastation of terrorists, the buildings in the town have already collapsed and collapsed, and even so, there are still many refugees who choose to live here. The targets of the terrorists this time are the women and children among the refugees. Terrorists also need to expand their recruitment, and it is impossible to find people to join this profession in a normal way so their personnel can only be plundered. And the children they captured, even if they resented them at the beginning, will be assimilated by these terrorists after a long time and become a real terrorist. As for the women, there is no need to say more about their usefulness. Shaking his head lightly, Jones threw these thoughts out of his mind, and then said directly, Tony, you go to deal with arresting people in the small town, and I will deal with detaining refugees. For the safety of refugees, we will deal with it within five seconds. Fighting, is there any problem? No problem. Hearing what Jones said, Tony responded immediately. Heavenly Raiders. If there are any words to describe the appearance of Jones and Tony, then these four words are undoubtedly the best choice. As a relatively large force among terrorists, ten rings can be said to have been rampant in this area of Afghanistan. Even the U.S. military was unable to form an effective strike against them due to various reasons. However, Jones and Tony were like a basin of cold water, 
directly extinguishing the rampant flames of the terrorists. From the moment Jones fell, the identities of the terrorists suddenly changed from perpetrators to victims. Even without using other weapons, Jones only needs to swing a fist, and he can directly throw a terrorist 20 to 30 meters away, and with a shockwave, he can directly kill a terrorist. Three seconds. In just three seconds, the six terrorists in charge of guarding the refugees were directly killed by Jones on the spot. And the moment Jones completed his mission, Tony on the other side had also completed his mission, eliminating all the scattered terrorists in the town. In the end, Tony held the leaders of a small group of terrorists in one hand and threw them in front of the refugees. It's up to you. Tony didn't seem to be in a good mood, he said coldly, and flew straight into the sky. Tony wasn't in a good mood, and at the moment Jones was also filled with disappointment. His eyes didn't absorb any of the six terrorists he killed just now. Obviously, aside from their ferocious style and the weapons in their hands, they just he can only be called a common person, not a strong person at all. Sighing helplessly, Jones jumped straight up and quickly followed Tony's figure in midair. Jones. Seeing Jones following up, Tony said directly, their boss is not here. I'll destroy those missiles first, and then. Boom. Before Tony finished speaking, a loud noise came directly from below, and the next moment, Tony fell directly from midair. Seeing this scene, Jones was taken aback, and a look of excitement appeared on his face. He remembered that in the original book, when Tony dealt with the terrorists in the town of Gamilla and then went to destroy the Jericho missile, he was shot down by a tank in midair. The steel armor is extremely flexible and its body size is only the file size of a person. It can shoot Tony down from midair. This gunner is definitely considered to be extremely excellent. The whole person fell from the sky in an instant, and Jones' sight directly locked on a tank on the ground. Turning his head and looking in Tony's direction, Tony from at the moment had already got up from the ground, and his eyes were also aimed at the tank. Not good. This guy wants to steal the head. A thought flashed in his mind, the thrusters under Jones' feet were activated instantly, and the whole person rushed directly towards the tank in front of him. Jones clearly remembered that Tony's armor was equipped with two small missiles. If he moved slowly, he would have nothing to do with himself. The position where Jones landed was not far from the tank, and Jones pushed the thrusters with all his strength. So, almost in the blink of an eye, Jones was running directly in front of the tank. At this time, the turret of the tank has also been calibrated, and the turret is directly aimed at Jones in front. Seeing this scene, Jones' eyes flashed, he raised his right hand, and aimed his palm directly at the cannon barrel, and a shockwave of energy directly shot into the cannon barrel. Boom. As soon as the energy shockwave hit the barrel, there was a muffled sound directly from inside. Regardless of these, Jones leapt and jumped directly on top of the tank, and then with his hands hard, he even opened the passage above the tank. Hey! A smug smile rose from the corner of his mouth, Jones grabbed the gunner out of the tank, and then a shockwave knew his life. After confirming that the gunner died, Jones immediately focused his sight on the gunner's body. He was basically sure that the gunner's elite level was definitely not weaker than that of the special forces of the US military. If killing such a guy would not yield the essence of life, Jones really didn't know how to improve the ability of your eyes. Is it possible to kill mutants of level 2 and above? Just kidding, if he did that, Charles and Magneto would never let him go. He doesn't want to be chased by the X-Men and the Brotherhood at the same time. Fortunately, Jones' worries were unnecessary. Along with the roar of Tony blowing up the missile on the other side, a white eye that only Jones could see rose from the gunner's body, and then quickly entered Jones's body, in the eyes. Feeling the relaxed feeling in his eyes, Jones laughed and flew straight into the sky. Although the essence of life that the gunner brought to Jones is much weaker than that of the pointed pillar, it is enough. Mutants with some strengths are not particularly easy to find, but there are still many elite warriors like the gunner, and Jones is already looking forward to it. What will be the second ability of the awakening of one's own eyes? With a gleam in his eyes, Jones accelerated to catch up with Tony in front of him. Glancing sideways at Tony, Jones said softly, Tony, there are not only a few people in ten rings, if you want to solve it, just solve it quickly. Quote dot dot dot. Yes. Hearing what Jones said, Tony nodded lightly, what are you going to do? 
J-A-R-V-I-S is better than little ghosts. You go to high altitude and use satellites to detect terrorist strongholds on the ground. I will search at low altitude, and if I find it, I will deal with it immediately. Hearing Tony's question, Jones directly stated his plan. In fact, even if Tony didn't ask himself, Jones would have said the same thing. When the gunner died just now, this plan had already arisen in his mind. Jones' arrangement was very reasonable, and Tony naturally wouldn't refuse. He nodded slightly, and Tony lifted himself up in an instant, and flew directly into the sky. But Jones landed in an instant, and searched for traces of the terrorists directly against the ground. Although the steel battle suits of Tony and Jones are still in the most primary form, it is no longer a problem for one person to deal with an army. When facing these terrorists, it is even more of a massacre. Tony was observing at high altitude, and when he saw the traces of terrorists, he sent them directly to Jones, and then Jones fully fired his horsepower, directly killed the terrorists in their excitement, and wiped out all the terrorists. Under such circumstances, Jones seems to be playing a game with a small map. Where there are monsters, he will rush there directly. After killing a wave of monsters and eating experience, he will directly rush to the gathering point of the next wave of monsters. In just over 40 minutes, Jones has wiped out six terrorist strongholds, each with more than 100 terrorists. In these six strongholds, Jones even absorbed the life essence of 30 or 40 elite warriors. In the end, Tony actually found Raza's trace directly. As soon as he received Tony's message, Jones rushed towards Raza without any hesitation, and directly killed Raza and dozens of elite warriors around him on the spot. At this time, Jones has completely ignored that the destruction of the Mark I is still in Raza's hands, and Raza has not handed it over to Obadiah. Jones also ignored, what should Obadiah do with his previous calculations if he didn't get the destruction of the Mark I and didn't research his own set of steel armor. Although many terrorists were killed by Jones detonating missiles before, there were one or two hundred terrorists killed by Jones alone. He has entered a state of madness. And it was at this time that Jones' eyeballs began to feel saturated, which woke Jones up from this somewhat insane state. After waking up, Jones only felt a chill in his heart, and a trace of fear rose in his mind. He himself remembered clearly what Jones did just now, and the feeling of that state just now was still clearly imprinted in Jones' mind. Jones couldn't imagine that if he didn't come back to his senses, what would happen after killing him? We'll do something crazy. Letting out a long breath, Jones jumped straight up and flew into the sky. He had already killed enough. Besides, Raza is dead, so there is no point in being here anymore. Jones. Seemingly aware of Jones' abnormality, Tony quietly looked at Jones beside him, and Tony couldn't help muttering in a low voice, you seem to be a little bit wrong. It's not right for you to kill so many people. Tony replied softly, and Jones' tone was tinged with coldness. Why did I forget this? Hearing what Jones said, Tony understood instantly. He basically didn't do anything just now, he just pointed out a place for Jones, and then Jones went. With a thought in his mind, Tony said directly, let's go back and invite the best psychologist in America. You don't need to be so troublesome. Hearing Tony's words, Jones rolled his eyes, and his tone softened a lot, it's good to have a good rest after going back. Continue to take a few paid leave, and you are responsible for providing me with news material. At that time, even if nothing happens, something will happen. Hey, this is not a good thing. Hearing that Jones was even joking with him, Tony couldn't help being taken aback, but he was also relieved. Judging from Jones' current state, it shouldn't have much impact. Stop talking nonsense, let's go. As soon as the figure moved, Jones took the lead and flew in the direction of the United States, hurry up, I don't want to be spotted by the US military's radar, and then fight them again. Okay. Hearing what Jones said, Tony responded loudly, and followed Jones directly in front of him. Jones carefully avoided the search of the US Air Force, but during the previous operation, Jones, who was on the rise to kill, forgot to hide his whereabouts. Those war reporters who were able to capture Raza's video naturally had channels to get close to this ghostly place in Afghanistan. Although Jones moved quickly, it was not without anyone noticing him. That evening, not long after Jones returned to the United States, he, or the steel armor he was wearing was on TV. 
Today, a reporter from our station found traces of fighting in Jemila. All the terrorists in the small town of Jemila were wiped out, and the refugees who were almost persecuted by terrorists were saved. And according to the dictation of the Jemila refugees, we learned that there were two iron men who helped them, one black and one golden red, possessing huge amounts of power, equipped with advanced weapons, and also possessed the flight ability. In addition to the terrorists in Jemila, several nearby terrorist strongholds were also destroyed by the mysterious Iron Man. According to U.S. military spokesman Lt. Col. Roddy, the U.S. military does not know who is the backbone of the Gamilla warlord, nor does it know the specific information of the two Iron Men, but he assured that the U.S. government was not involved. Below is a video of one of the Iron Man captured by our reporter. Quote. After the long introduction, a video began to play on the TV. In the video, a black steel armor was wreaking havoc, detonating a missile in a stronghold in a short time, and then flew into the sky and disappeared in the video. Seeing this scene, the corner of Tony's mouth twitched, and he turned to look at Jones. Jones, it looks like this is bad news. I guess you're going to be famous soon. What's wrong? Turning his head to look at Tony, Jones's face was full of jokes. Tony Stark and Lt. Col. Roddy drove the new armor developed by Tony Stark and wiped out a terrorist in Afghanistan organization, this is a very good thing. You. Hearing Jones's words, Tony's face froze, his eyes stared straight at Jones in front of him, his face was full of disbelief, why don't you bring such ones? We won't admittedly. Then I can't control it. With a smug look on his face, Jones said directly, you know the face of the media, I believe that for them, when the topic is high enough, they are willing to distort it. Check the truth of the matter. Jones. Although he didn't want to admit it, Tony had to admit that what Jones said was indeed true, he sighed helplessly, and Tony tried to make a final struggle, that armor is obviously you. No. Jones shook his head lightly, with a smile on his face. That's you and Roddy, I have a video of you doing research here. Roddy is from the military, and you are known all over the United States have a good relationship with him. Jones didn't say everything, but Jones believed that Tony definitely understood what he wanted to express. Quote dot 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 quote. Looking at Jones helplessly, Tony nodded helplessly, and said softly, Okay, I get it, no one will know that the person inside that armor is yours. Thank you. Hearing Tony's words, the smile on Jones' face instantly became brighter. Just when Jones threatened Tony to help him hide his identity, Obadiah was gnashing his teeth in his own home. Like the two of Jones, Obadiah was also watching the report on that channel, and in his hand was holding some photos of steel armor. The content and clarity of these photos were much better than those on TV. After a long silence, Obadiah raised his hand and turned off the TV. Afterwards, Obadiah took out his mobile phone and quickly dialed a number. After a short wait, the phone finally connected. Hey, find all the Ten Rings strongholds in Afghanistan, and their survivors. Tell me when you find it, and then arrange a helicopter, I'm going to Afghanistan. Obadiah's actions unbeknownst to Jones, Jones left Tony's home directly after returning from Afghanistan. This was a decision Jones made on the way back. He had stayed at Tony's house for a long time, and it turned out that Tony's house did a good job of protecting it. During the time he stayed at Tony's house, Jones did not he has never been assassinated, not only the assassination, even the agents sent by S.H.I.E.L.D. seem to have disappeared. This is not what Jones wants. When he was in Afghanistan, Jones felt that his eyes were close to saturation. He only needed to kill one or two strong people, and he would be able to awakening for the second time and gain a new ability. Therefore, he must take a risk to attract the killer, and then kill him to evolve himself. In a few days, Obadiah will almost act. When Obadiah dies, Jones' bounty will be automatically revoked. At that time, no one will send experience. At that time, if you want to have such an opportunity again, you don't know when you will have to wait. After Jones left Tony's house, he rushed directly to the apartment he rented, and the first thing Jones did when he returned to the apartment was to change rooms. When Jones rented this room, he didn't know that he was assassinated, so he rented the most comfortable room. Knowing that someone assassinated him now, Jones can't be as convenient as before. The floor of Jones' room is not too high, and there are many high-rise buildings around, and the bed is not far from the window. 
If he sleeps on this bed, there are no less than a hundred sniper spots that can hit Jones outside. Similarly, because the floor is not high, even without a sniper rifle, the killer can climb out of the window and shoot Jones directly in the room. If such a room is not changed, then it is really dead, so don't complain about it. Looking around at the rooms on the highest floor, Jones directly selected a room at the end of the corridor, and then, the move was about to begin. This apartment is a carry-on type. Jones doesn't need to move too many things, but he hasn't come back for a month. Jones's things are covered with a thick layer of dust, so Jones has to clean them. By the time Jones had finished moving and doing the laundry, it was already dark. After tidying everything up, Jones threw himself directly on the bed. It's really not good at doing housework or something. I don't know if it's because I'm really tired or because I've been mentally tense during this time, but as soon as I went to bed, Jones fell asleep straight away. Time did not stop passing as Jones fell asleep. Soon, the sky outside was completely dark, and soon, the clock on the wall went directly to the position of 2 o'clock in the morning. Even the noisy New York, at this point everything became quiet. And at this moment, there was a soft knock on the door of Jones' new room. Afterwards, the door of Jones' room was opened silently, and a man dressed in black and wearing night vision goggles walked directly into Jones' room. After walking a few steps into the room, the man saw Jones directly on the bed. Looking at Jones who was drowsy, the corner of the man's mouth twitched, and a look of disdain appeared on his face. How could this man not see Jones' plan to change rooms during the day, but what's the use of it? He is determined to win today. He'd been eyeing Jones for a long time, but Jones was always at Tony's house, so he never had a chance. He didn't dare go to Tony's house to assassinate Jones, and he didn't even dare to go near Tony's house. The last killer who went to assassinate Jones has become a joke in the killer world. Almost all powerful killers are laughing at this stunned young man who dared to go to Tony's house to assassinate a one million target. Although he didn't know what danger was in Tony's house, he didn't want to make the same mistake again. In fact, if Jones' bounty hadn't suddenly increased to five million, he would have already planned to pay some liquidated damages yesterday and give up the mission of assassinating Jones. Glancing straight at Jones on the bed, the killer waved one hand, and a flying dart flew out of his hand, shooting towards Jones' head. If there is no accident, the flying darts will be inserted deeply into Jones' eyes, killing Jones directly on the spot. But how can there be so many accidents in this world? As soon as the killer's flying darts shot, Jones turned over and rolled off the bed, and the flying darts, attack fell through instantly. And just as Jones moved, the lights in the room came on at the same time. This killer wears low-light night vision goggles, through the night vision goggles with image intensifier tubes, the weak target image illuminated by night sky light is enhanced, and when wearing this kind of night vision goggles, suddenly there is a strong light, that seen no need to think about it. As soon as the light was turned on, the killer couldn't help covering his eyes and howled. The enhanced light shone directly on his eyes. Even if he wasn't blind, his eyesight would be greatly reduced in the future. And the most important thing is the pain now. Without making the killer suffer for too long, Jones shot the killer directly in the head when the lights came on, killing him on the spot. The gun was taken from Tony, and the room was also covered with alarms by Jones. As long as someone came in, a tiny earphone on Jones' ear would emit a silent irritating wave, waking Jones from sleep. To be honest, even Jones was a little surprised to kill the killer so easily. He was already prepared for a fierce battle and even got injured. Jones didn't know that the killer he killed just now was not particularly professional, and could even be regarded as a halfway monk. This person has practiced martial arts since he was a child, so he can be regarded as a good martial artist, and his flying darts technique is even more proficient. But it's a pity that he couldn't resist the temptation of this materialistic society and became addicted to drugs. How could his original income fill such a bottomless pit? In desperation, the man could only use his kung fu and flying darts skills to become a killer. If but in terms of the ability to fight head on, this person is already comparable to some top-notch killers, but Jones has tried his best, and he himself is not professional at all, so he was killed by Jones. However, these things are not important anymore, Jones' eyes were full of excitement as he stared straight at the killer's body. 
From Joan's field of vision, a puff of white smoke could be clearly seen floating from the killer's body, and then, flew directly into Joan's eyes. The next moment, a long-lost pain came directly from Joan's eyeball. Feeling the sharp pain, Jones frowned tightly. However, compared with the first time, the pain this time is undoubtedly much weaker. Closing his eyes tightly, Jones resisted the pain in his eyes, groped and lay back on the bed, and then quietly waited for the second awakening. Just like the first time, as time passed, the pain in Jones' eyes began to dissipate a lot, and after that, there was a warm feeling in the eyeballs. And along with this feeling, there was also a message that came from nowhere. Speaking of which, this information is also miraculous. This is the third time Jones has received this kind of information, but even though Jones tried his best to sense it, he still couldn't detect how this information appeared. Not only that, under careful induction, Jones actually had an idea pop up in his mind. Maybe. I already knew what was in the message, but just remembered it suddenly. With a chuckle, Jones put aside the thoughts in his mind, and prepared to check what kind of ability he had obtained this time. However, just when Jones was about to get up and observe, a strange energy suddenly drilled out of his eyes and spread directly to all parts of Jones' body. And the activation of this energy seemed to ignite a fuse, and the energy of the light radiation that had been hiding in Jones' eyes also moved accordingly, and followed this strange energy to spread to the whole body. Then, there was another sharp pain, and this time the pain was different from before. Although the previous pain was severe, it was only a part of the eye. But now, there is a sharp pain coming from all over his body. The two energies seemed to be fighting in Jones' body, and Jones' body became their battlefield. The energy of the light radiation is powerful, and the weird energy later has this kind of inexplicable toughness, so that it has never been defeated by the energy of the light radiation. However, no matter how tough it is, it can't match its strength. As time goes by, the strange energy is slowly defeated by the energy of the light radiation, and more than half of it has disappeared. And just when this strange energy was about to be wiped out by the energy of the light radiation, the change arose again. As if unwilling to be wiped out by the energy of the light radiation, the weird energy instantly turned the tip of the gun, and directly began to absorb the energy in Jones' body. Sensing this change, Jones' complexion changed instantly. His body has only strengthened a little in the past few months, and now this strange energy has started to absorb his body energy. Despite the anxiety in his heart, Jones couldn't do anything about it, whether it was this weird energy or the energy of the light radiation, Jones couldn't control it. What the hell is going on? Roared in his heart, Jones felt that he was going crazy, his body energy had already been absorbed a lot, and Jones estimated that his current physical fitness had returned to the level just now. Time to cross over, it's time for awakening Superman's eyes. And at this time, the weird energy didn't mean to stop at all, it was still absorbing Jones' body strength non-stop, and at this time, Jones' mood can only be described as despair. Just when Jones thought he was going to be sucked dry by this strange energy, the energy of the light radiation moved. As if he didn't want to see anything happen to Jones, the energy of the light radiation also directly integrated into Jones' body, and began to strengthen Jones' body. The energy of the light radiation is responsible for strengthening Jones' body, while the weird energy is absorbing Jones' body energy. This strange energy actually made a beautiful turnaround in this way, and began to quickly absorb the energy of the light radiation. The energy of light radiation is not the energy used by Jones' eyes to use ability, but the energy contained in the eyes that has not been absorbed after Jones' eyes absorb the light energy and radiation of the sun. Therefore, the amount of this energy not a lot. It didn't take long for the energy of the light radiation to be completely absorbed by Jones' body, and then absorbed by that weird energy again. And after absorbing the energy of the light radiation, a lot of powerful strange energy seemed to be satisfied, and it stopped absorbing Jones' body energy. Not only that, this weird energy may be due to absorbing a lot of light radiation energy, the nature has also undergone some changes, and even began to circulate in Jones' body. And in the process of circulation, this energy also dispersed a lot to strengthen Jones' body. The next moment, Jones' physical fitness directly began to skyrocket. In less than a minute, it has increased to about twice the previous level. 
After being raised to this level, the weird energy no longer continued to circulate in Joan's body, but directly ran to Joan's dantian, dormant. Letting out a long breath, Joan's heart that had been holding him was finally relieved, it was finally over. Next, you should study that piece of information carefully to find out what happened just now. About ten minutes later, Joan slowly opened his eyes, and a helpless look appeared on his face. What happened just now, Jones has almost figured it out. To put it simply, Jones' abilities are all brought about by the eyes, and Jones' eyes are equivalent to the Dantian in martial arts, the Golden Core in Shentia, and the Nascent Soul, which are places where energy is stored. As I said before, light radiation is not a consumable for Superman's eyes using ability, but the energy that is not absorbed immediately after Superman's eyes absorb the energy and radiation of light. Therefore, this energy has been hidden in Jones' eyes, and has not been discovered by Jones. If there are no other changes, this energy will probably always be stored in Jones' eyes, and it will become more and more, and eventually it will blow up directly. This is probably the disadvantage of Jones only having Superman eyes, but not having a Superman body. However, what I just said is based on the fact that no other changes have occurred. And just now, something else happened to Jones' eyes. His eyes awakened a pair of kaleidoscope sharingan. That's right. It is the kaleidoscope sharingan in Naruto. Unlike Superman's eyes, sharingan needs energy to activate, and this energy is the chakra that Jones is familiar with. Jones didn't have much chakra before, so the awakening of kaleidoscope sharingan also directly brought some chakra to Jones, so that Jones' body has chakra, which is the strange energy that Jones sensed before. Logically speaking, this should be a good thing. But don't forget what I said before, Jones' eyes are like the Dantian of a martial arts man. The addition of chakra is like practicing two completely different internal strengths at the same time. Although Jones has two eyes, the two energies don't sit harmoniously on one side. And then, to use the most appropriate word to describe it, Jones is crazy. The struggle between the two energies in the body almost killed Jones, but fortunately, the final result was good. The nature of chakra has undergone some changes, and it no longer confronts the energy of light radiation. The hidden danger of light radiation is also solved by chakra. In the future, the energy of light radiation that Superman's eyes cannot absorb at once will be absorbed by chakra. And Jones's current chakra amount is roughly equivalent to the common chunin in the Naruto world, not a lot, and it can even be called a little less. But, unlike the ninja in Naruto, his chakra, can be restored by sunbathing. After confirming this information through his own experiments, Jones was completely Spartan. He didn't know why, but he had a non-mainstream feeling about Superman's eyes and sharing sharing eyes. Superman's eyes are very likely to absorb too much energy and explode. Kaleidoscope Sharingan brings chakra to itself, which is so different. By the way, Kaleidoscope Sharingan. Thinking of the second pupil technique of his new awakening in his mind, he seemed to feel a lot more relaxed. Kaleidoscope Sharingan will produce different abilities depending on the person who opened the eyes, but Jones got Obito's eyes, both eyes. Obito's kaleidoscope has both abilities of the gods, but the difference is that the ability of the left eye can distort the space of the target in the vision and send it to an exclusive different space. As for the ability in the right eye, you have to touch or get close to the target before you can inhale the opponent, but you can send a part of your body into a different space, so as to penetrate the opponent's attack, or let the whole body enter the different space. In addition to the ability of both eyes, people who have two kaleidoscope sharingan can also open Suzano. An ability that transcends the pattern. Definitely, the ability of kaleidoscope is powerful, but it also has its own disadvantages. The more pupils are used, the sooner the day of blindness will come. Only by integrating into eternal kaleidoscope sharingan or possessing the first generation of Hokage cells can this result be avoided. And Suzano is even more perverted. Unless you have the eternal kaleidoscope sharingan, otherwise, every time you use Suzano, you will have huge amounts of side effects on your body. If you use it for a long time, you will not only feel pain all over your body and cause spitting blood will also accelerate the blindness of sharingan. But, Jones isn't afraid of that. He doesn't have eternal eyes, and he doesn't have first-generation cells, but he has Superman eyes. For Jones, both eyes and body strength are constantly increasing, the difference is only in the speed. 
However, whether it is fast or slow, there is no problem at all to offset the side effects of the kaleidoscope. That night, Jones was so excited that he didn't fall asleep. After awakening Obito's kaleidoscope Sharingan, Jones' physical fitness is no longer a weakness. Although the strength is not particularly strong, as long as Jones hides in a different dimension, there will be no problems. However, Jones doesn't have much chakra right now, Kamui can't be used for too long, and Susanoku can't be used at all. Otherwise, there are really few people in this world who are a threat to Jones. However, even if Tony had a convulsion and ran to Washington, Jones had to follow. Let Potts book a plane ticket to Washington for himself, and when he was about to hang up the phone, Jones seemed to think of something suddenly, and said softly, By the way, Miss Pepe, I want to ask, my pair of steel armors was it taken to Washington by Tony? Without using the ticket that Potts booked for himself, Jones quickly felt that Tony was at home in New York, and Jones put on the steel armor and ran towards Washington. Jones has to hurry now, if he slows down, Tony is going to die in Washington today. In fact, Jones had wasted a lot of time on the journey from his apartment to Tony's. Although I don't know why Tony went to Washington, but Tony's behavior is quite suspected of death. Different from the original book, because the initial research was in New York, Potts gave Tony a gift, the arc reactor that Tony made in the cave was also placed in Tony's home in New York. And Jones' own steel armor is in New York. And Tony's steel armor does not have an independent function system, so. Tony now only has an arc reactor on his chest. If Jones didn't get there, or didn't get there in time, Tony would have been pretty much declared dead once that reactor was taken. Jones didn't know the address Potts gave, but with the help of the kid, Jones could still take the fastest route to Tony's house. And when Jones finally arrived at his destination, it was completely dark. Landing quickly on the outside of the villa, Jones scanned the inside of the villa with his perspective eyes, and then let out a long breath. Obadiah has been here, but not long after he left, Tony at the moment is on the top floor of the villa, sitting on the sofa with a pale face. There is no struggling to climb to the basement to get the arc reactor like in the original book. In fact, there is no arc reactor in the basement of this villa. At the moment Tony's eyes are full of deepness, as if he is thinking about something. Some people say that when people are about to die, they will recall their life experiences, and their thinking will undergo a sublimation. I don't know what Tony is now not in this state. With a flash of light in his eyes, Jones' footsteps suddenly stopped, and the whole person walked out of the steel armor, and the steel armor stayed where Jones was standing just now. Turning around and looking at the steel armor behind him, the kaleidoscope Sharingan instantly opened, and a vortex appeared in the right eye, absorbing the steel armor, leaving only Jones in casual clothes. After finishing all this, Jones couldn't help showing a smug look in his eyes, which probably couldn't be surpassed by Tony, the fastest unloading. J-A-R-V-I-S. Open the door. Standing at the door of the villa, Jones immediately shouted, but did not get any response. Have you been shielded? After a moment of silence, Jones' thermal light shot out instantly, directly punching a big hole in the door lock. Afterwards, Jones entered the room as soon as he opened the door, and ran straight in Tony's direction. The function of JARVIS is extremely powerful, but it is not invincible. When Avengers was first, JARVIS was blocked. Although the technology should be inferior to S.H.I.E.L.D., it should not be difficult for Obadiah to block JARVIS in a short time. His physical fitness has doubled, and Jones' speed is also much faster. Although he hasn't used chakra yet, Jones still rushed to the room where Tony is in two or three steps. The clairvoyant eyes were opened, and Jones directly locked his eyes on Tony's body, and then completely relaxed. He came just in time, the shrapnel in Tony's body was still about four or five centimeters away from his heart, if Jones was a few minutes late, Tony would probably be finished. Reaching out from his pocket, he took out the first arc reactor made by Tony, and Jones walked directly in Tony's direction. Hey. Dude, you don't look very good. Jones. Seeing Jones' appearance, Tony was taken aback for a moment, and then a look of excitement appeared on his face, and he directly aimed his eyes at the arc reactor in Jones' hand. Stop. Nonsense. After a while. I, am going to die. It may be that the excitement caused the blood flow to accelerate, and Tony's face turned pale when he said a word. 
Seeing this scene, Jones didn't dare to tease him anymore, and walked forward quickly, Jones directly placed the arc reactor on Tony's chest. As the light on the arc reactor rose, the magnetic device on Tony's chest was also instantly activated, directly bringing the shrapnel in Tony's body to the adsorbent, preventing it from getting close to the heart. Watching this scene through clairvoyant eyes, Jones couldn't help frowning, Tony, you'd better hurry up and get the shrapnel out of your body, it's too dangerous. Hearing what Jones said, Tony was stunned for a moment, and couldn't help showing a look of disappointment on his face. Jones, you don't understand. Do you think I don't want to take it out? But the risk of the operation is too great, so we can it is the safest choice. Quote dot 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 quote. Hearing Tony's words, Jones couldn't help shaking his head, that's not what he meant. Jones doesn't know if Tony will face Magneto in the future, but no matter whether he will develop anti-Magneto armor or not, as long as he doesn't take out the shrapnel in his body, Tony will always be just a lamb waiting to be slaughtered when facing Magneto. Putting aside the thoughts in his mind, Jones stared straight into Tony's eyes, and a smug look suddenly appeared on his face. Tony, this time, I really saved your life. You're right. Hearing what Jones said, Tony's mouth twitched, and he stood up from the sofa, if you delete all those video recordings of yours, I will thank you even more. Then you better not thank me. Hearing Tony's words, the corner of Jones's mouth couldn't help but a smug expression, compared to saving you, I spent a lot of effort getting those things. Really. Hearing what Jones said, Tony grinned, but his face suddenly became serious, compared to this, I want to know why you know that the mastermind is Obadiah. Because the one who assassinated me was Obadiah. Tony had expected to ask this question, and Jones' face didn't show any expression at all. I'm not like you, I doubt it, but he was still indecisive and refused to do it, and in the end he almost played himself to death. Quote dot 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 quote. Hearing what Jones said, Tony couldn't help being silent for a while. He knew that what Jones said was right. He was too indecisive when it came to Obadiah's matter, but Obadiah still looked at him anyway. When he grew up, he really couldn't bear it. It won't happen now. With a long breath, Tony managed to get up from the sofa. Potts is in danger, I'm going to save her. Tony was full of momentum, but as soon as he stood up, Tony staggered and almost fell to the ground. The internal shrapnel problem was solved, but Tony's nerves from Obadiah's infrasonic weapon were not so easy to recover from. Then I wish you good luck. Lifting Tony up, Jones directly entangled Tony and walked towards the elevator. You know, my body is not as hard as gold and titanium alloys, so in order to avoid being beaten to death, I will just find a place to silently wish you well. Hey. Tony was taken aback when he heard what Jones said, and a look of pleading appeared on his face. Jones, I know your ability, find pots, and help me protect her. Please. Seeing Tony like this, Jones couldn't help being stunned. To be honest, he never thought that he would see Tony like this, which was completely inconsistent with Tony's previous image. Moreover, Tony's performance made Jones feel angry and guilty. The main reason why he came to help Tony was to push Tony to the foreground and cover up his actions. Today, but he is ready to kill someone. Okay. After a moment of silence, Jones finally nodded lightly, but, the person who offered me a bounty is Obadiah. Hearing Jones' words, Tony's face froze, and a look of struggle could not help appearing in his eyes. To be honest, he really hadn't considered killing Obadiah. Seeing Tony's silence, Jones narrowed his eyes and said directly, Tony, indecision is not what you should have. Quote dot dot dot. I see. As the elevator doors opened, Tony's voice finally reached Jones' ears. Nodding his head slightly, Jones didn't say anything, and walked out of the elevator directly. Tony's body should be fine now, and he doesn't need his support anymore. Having made a decision in his heart, Tony stepped out of the elevator as if he had dropped a rock. Watching Tony walk to Mark III and start dressing, Jones also walked directly to Tony's car. Tony, get J-A-R-V-I-S done and come and drive me. Take me to Peeps. After throwing down a sentence, Jones got into the car beside him directly. As soon as he was seated, Jones' eyes turned cold instantly, and a trace of blood seemed to appear in his pupils. If he remembers correctly, there should be an elite team under Obadiah, and Potts also contacted Phil Coulson and took several S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to arrest Obadiah. After awakening the kaleidoscope Sharingan, 
Jones became more and more aware of the importance of the eyes, and roughly understood the criteria for the eyes to absorb the essence of life. Whether it is the team under Obadiah or the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they all definitely meet that standard. And these people are also Jones' targets tonight. Mr. Jones. Just as Jones was thinking, the voice of J.A.R.V.I.S. suddenly sounded in the car. According to Mr. Tony's request, we are in a hurry, so I may go faster next time. I don't want you to slow down. Nodding lightly, Jones put the seat belt on himself directly, J.A.R.V.I.S., at full speed. As Jones' voice fell, the car burst into a violent roar, and then the whole car rushed straight down the driveway. And at the same time as the car started, Tony over there also started instantly, smashed through the ceiling above his head, and flew into the sky. The goal of both of them is the same, Stark Industrial Park. But the purpose of the two is completely opposite. One, is to save people. One, for the kill. Unbeknownst to both Jones and Tony, Potts also brought Phil Coulson and several S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to the Stark Industrial Park while they were operating. And not long after they entered the Industrial Park, Obadiah directly put on his steel armor and began to attack them fiercely. The curtain over the Industrial Park was about to open, but Jones at the moment began to drive crazily on the street at a speed close to 200 miles per hour. No, it wasn't Jones. Although Jones was sitting in the driver's seat, the driver was its J-A-R-V-I-S. Jones reckoned that if a common person was sitting here, he would have been played crazy by J-A-R-V-I-S by now. After turning a 90-degree curve at a speed of about 120 miles per hour, and then clinging to the edge of a large truck to overtake, Jones decisively ran Chakra and firmly put Adzorb on the seat. Otherwise, Jones really doubts he'll be thrown straight out of the car. J-A-R-V-I-S. Stabilizing his figure, Jones shouted loudly and started his plan for today, does Obadiah have a unit under his command? Yes sir. Hearing what Jones said, J-A-R-V-I-S said directly, Obadiah recruited 15 of the most elite Marine Corps veterans five years ago, and then formed his own private bodyguard team. Okay. Hearing what J-A-R-V-I-S said, Jones said directly, hack Obadiah's communication information, find their contact information, and then imitate Obadiah's voice and tone, and send them to the Potomac River Bridge standby over there. Let them go now. Then cut off Obadiah's external communications. Sorry. Hearing what Jones said, J-A-R-V-I-S said directly, you don't have this authority, Mr. Jones. If you want to do this, you must get Mr. Stark's permission. Then contact him now. Yes, Mr. Jones. About 10 seconds later, Tony's voice suddenly rang out from inside the car. Jones, what are you going to do? Backquote. Without directly answering Tony's question, Jones said directly, if you don't want 15 armed elites to make trouble, just do as I say. J-A-R-V-I-S, do as he says. Hearing Jones' words, Tony didn't have any hesitation, just let out a loud shout. Yes, sir. Hearing Tony's words, J-A-R-V-I-S responded and then fell silent, obviously doing what Jones said just now. Although J-A-R-V-I-S was distracted to do other things, the speed of the car did not slow down at all, and it was even slightly faster than before. After about three or four minutes, the car stopped directly outside the Stark Industrial Park. J-A-R-V-I-S. The car is parked here, I'll get Potts out in a minute. Then you send her away. Throwing down a word lightly, Jones ran directly towards the Industrial Park. Jones rushed to the industrial park by car, and Tony over there had already started fighting with Obadiah. But Potts did not stay outside the industrial park. When Obadiah activated the steel armor, Potts and the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. scattered and fled, and later Potts was almost killed by Obadiah. If Tony hadn't arrived in time, Jones probably would have found Potts' body. Scanning through his perspective eyes, Jones easily found Potts who was hiding, and then took Potts out of the factory and sent him to the car in about a minute. Watching the car carrying Potts leave, Jones' demeanor changed instantly, and his eyes became sharper. Turning his head to look inside the factory building, the light in Jones' eyes flickered, and the corners of his mouth couldn't help but draw a curve. One, two, three, seven. Counting Phil Coulson, there are seven agents, S-H-I-E-L-D's agents. Let me see how elite you guys are. A thought flashed through his mind. Jones took out a pair of gloves from his pocket, put
put them on his hands, and then rushed directly to the inside of the factory building, time is precious, there are fifteen elite warriors waiting for him to harvest beside the Potomac River. Carefully avoiding the cameras in the factory building, Jones directly followed the most reasonable route and rushed in the direction of those shield agents. At the moment's agents all looked cautious. When avoiding Obadiah's attack just now, several agents and pots all got separated. But they didn't go directly outside the factory building like Potts did, but directly searched carefully in the factory building. Hey! Looking at the first target not far ahead, he greeted directly, Mr. Detective, do you know where Miss Potts is? You are. Jones. Recognizing Jones' identity at a glance, the agent couldn't help showing a look of doubt on his face, what are you doing here? Tony asked me to find Miss Potts, he said that Miss Potts might be in danger, let me take her away quickly. Ah, you're right, it's really dangerous here. Hearing what Jones said, the agent waved at Jones directly, and said softly, come and follow me, I just got separated from Miss Pepe. Let's go together go find her. Really? Then thank you. Hearing the agent's words, Jones hastily bowed his head to thank him, and at the same time stepped in the direction of the agent and walked over. It doesn't matter, we should be responsible for protecting Miss Pepe. What is this? Just as the agent was talking, Jones raised his head, and Sanguyu's Sharingan directly met the agent's eyes. In just a split second, there was a trace of confusion in the agent's eyes, and the whole person was completely numb, made a sound. A dark red light flashed in Jones' eyes, and Jones' cautious look disappeared in an instant. He walked up to the agent, and Jones directly said softly, Your identity, Mr. Detective. Strategic Homeland Intervention Executive Logistics Division Rapid Response Special Forces Member, Atla Lee. Very good. Nodding lightly, Jones' deep voice rang in the agent's ear again. Atra Lee, I'm Locke Rumlow, Captain of the Rapid Response Special Forces of the Logistics Department of the Land Strategic Intervention Executive, report to me about the mission. Yes, Captain, we arrived under the leadership of Agent Phil Coulson. Then under the attack of Obadiah, Agent Phil Coulson and I dispersed, and then we began to search the factory for Stark Industries bring high-tech products back to the Bureau. Jones knew what the agent said at the beginning, but when he heard his last sentence, Jones couldn't help being taken aback. They are still spying on Tony's technology. But their plan is not bad, this is indeed a great opportunity. Staring straight at the agent in front of him, Jones said directly, Okay, I understand, your mission is over now. Atla Lee. Yes. Hearing the end of the mission, Jones obviously felt the agent's body and mind relax a lot. It's this time. With a flash of light in his eyes, Jones leaned over to the agent's ear and whispered, Hail Hydra. Hearing Jones' words, the agent's eyes suddenly flashed, and there was no hesitation in response, Hail Hydra. The next moment, a small knife was directly and deeply inserted into the agent's heart. With a push, Jones pushed the agent to the ground. Taking a step forward, Jones looked down at the silent agent, his eyes were full of coldness, I'm really disappointed, Mr. Agent. As soon as the voice fell, Jones' figure flashed, and he rushed directly to the next target. Ten minutes later, a disinfection room in the factory building of Stark Industrial Park. Put the corpse of the fourth target, at the moment Jones's face is full of disappointment, four. Four targets in a row. Jones originally planned to use hypnotic ability as an agent to provide himself with the intelligence agency what about the news, but I didn't expect that the four targets in a row are all Hydra spies. It's such a huge monster. With a sigh, Jones opened his perspective eyes and searched the factory again. But at this glance, Jones couldn't help being stunned, and saw that Phil Coulson and the other two agents got together at some point, looking around vigilantly. And not far from them is the place where the first agent died. It was discovered. Seeing this scene, Jones couldn't help but frown. The six agents brought out by Phil Coulson to perform the mission today are all members of the Rapid Response Special Forces. The captain of this force is the Bruce Locke that Jones just mentioned Rumlow, Hydra's advanced spy, nicknamed Crossbones. According to such a captain and the situation of the first four agents, Jones feels that he has reason to believe that this unit is a spy of Hydra. Jones has now given up the idea of planting spies in S.H.I.E.L.D. Those two agents, 90% may be Hydra spies. Although he is very confident in the hypnotic ability ability of Sharingan, 
Jones still does not want to take such inexplicable risks. The agent of hypnotic ability shield has the risk of being exposed to shield. He even got a Hydra spy to get into shield. Please, that's not the way to play to death. As for Phil Coulson, Jones has never considered him as a target. Phil Coulson is an important figure in shield. If he is manipulated, there is a high possibility that shield will find out. Forget it, let's end it here at shield. Two lucky guys. Narrowing his eyes slightly, Jones resolutely gave up on the two agents. Turning his head to look at the environment in the room, Jones stared, and Sanguyu's Sharingan instantly turned into a kaleidoscope. The next moment, along with a spiral ripple appeared, Jones' steel armor and a corpse suddenly appeared in the inside the room. Quickly turning off the kaleidoscope, Jones directly aimed his gaze at the corpse that had just been brought out from a different dimension. This corpse is the killer who came to assassinate Jones a week ago. After Jones killed him, he planned to call the police directly and let the police deal with it. Anyway, I am self-defense, and Tony will be behind me, so the police will not be responsible for it. However, when Jones found out that his new awakening ability turned out to be a kaleidoscope with soil, Jones decisively dismissed the idea of calling the police, and instead directly took the killer's body into a different space. The killer came to Stark Industrial Park to assassinate me, but he met the agent in the factory building, and then the killer killed the agent, I ran away in a panic, the killer chased me, and then I met the second agent, but he was still killed by the killer. In this way, until he encountered the fourth agent, he and the killer fought in the disinfection room, and then accidentally ignited the disinfection alcohol. It ignited the fire directly. Muttering softly in his mouth, Jones couldn't help being angry and smiled. It's not a perfect script, but it can't be said to be bad. After this time, S.H.I.E.L.D. will definitely suspect me, but there is no evidence, how can you ignore it? Tony's existence is directly attacking me. Whispering, Jones placed several barrels of alcohol beside the killer and the fourth agent. Saved Tony once, helped Potts once, and got news of Howard Stark's death. S.H.I.E.L.D., how are you going to get past Tony's umbrella? Staring straight at the alcohol barrel. Jones stared, and two red rays pierced the alcohol barrel instantly. Looking at the raging fire in front of him, Jones turned around and walked out the door without any hesitation. This side is settled, it's time to go to that side. Without any pause in the pace of his feet, Jones put on the steel armor directly, avoided the cameras in the road store all the way, and quickly rushed to the outside of the Potomac River Bridge. Compared to Shield's side, Obadiah's elite squad is much easier to deal with. Jones just needs to pay attention not to be seen by any other cameras, and then wipe out this squad. Under the ravages of the steel armor, this elite squad of 15 people didn't even have the ability to resist at all, so they were directly killed by Jones on the spot, harvesting their life essence. With a smile on the corner of his mouth, Jones directly threw the bodies of these people into the Potomac River one by one, and let them drift away. Jones doesn't have any sympathy for them. His, 423, were originally soldiers, but after retiring from the army, they became Obadiah's men for profit. Jones didn't know how many shameful things they did for Obadiah, I don't want to know about this, anyway, they will inevitably end up dead. Four minutes. It's almost time, it's time to contact Tony. The corner of his mouth curled up slightly, Jones lifted off in an instant, and flew directly to the Stark Industrial Park. At the same time, he dialed Tony's number. At the moment, the battle on Tony's side should be intense, and Tony didn't answer Jones' call until Jones was already close to the outside of the Industrial Park. As soon as the call was connected, Jones heard Tony's loud voice. Jones, the reactor is about to run out of energy, and the situation is not good. Can you come over and help me? Sorry, Tony. While speaking, Jones landed quickly, received the steel armor into the different space again, and said softly, I'm not very optimistic here, Potts sent away, but a killer came to me now, the factory is full of agents, I can't fight him directly, I'm hiding everywhere. What? Hearing what Jones said, Tony was stunned. Shit. If you keep your hand, I'm going to die. Dot 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 quote. Hearing Tony's words, Jones was silent for a moment, and then said softly, Okay, I'm afraid of you, what do I need to do? This is not going to work. We have to overload the reactor and blow the roof off. Reactor. The big one in the plant. That's right. Hearing what Jones said, 
Tony said quickly, go to the center console, turn on all the circuits, I'll tell you when I leave the roof, and then you press the switch button, everything here will be turned off. It exploded. Are you with me? Stepping towards the direction of the giant reactor in the factory building, Jones couldn't help but whispered, you don't look like someone who would be so selfless. Please, Jones, don't say such useless things at such a critical time. If Obadiah is allowed to manufacture steel armor in batches, the whole world will be in chaos. Hearing Jones at this time, he was still in the mood to tease himself, Tony couldn't help but raise his voice a few times. Okay, I won't quarrel with you. Speaking of which, I have a better plan, are you interested in hearing it? Stepping into the room where the reactor was, Jones looked up at Obadiah on the roof yawned Tony. What's the plan? First you have to take off that big guy's helmet. I understand. Hearing what Jones said, Tony's eyes flashed brightly, and he quietly approached Obadiah. Take off the connecting wire of his helmet, and he can't do it without taking off the helmet. While talking, Tony was already close to behind Obadiah, and as the words fell, Tony jumped up and jumped onto Obadiah's shoulder in an instant. This place looks like a weak point. Reaching out and grabbing a thick thread under Obadiah's helmet, Tony murmured and pulled it off. Tony. With Obadiah's roar, Tony's body was directly grabbed by Obadiah. The next moment, Obadiah pinched Tony's head and threw it backhand, directly throwing Tony out. I agreed to remove Obadiah's helmet, but my own was taken off first. Whispered in his mouth, but Jones directly aimed his gaze at Obadiah diagonally above. The imaging system is destroyed, Obadiah at the moment can only see through the two holes in the eye part, if he does not take off the helmet, he can't do anything at all. Sure enough, after taking two steps towards Tony, Obadiah's armor suddenly split from his chest, revealing Obadiah hidden inside. Tony. I've never bought anything like this, but I say this outfit is very cool. With a smug look on his face, Obadiah directly crushed Tony's helmet in his hand, and threw it away with a flick of his hand. To Tony's side. You have surpassed yourself, Tony, your father will be proud of you. Staring at Tony lying in front of him, Obadiah's face instantly turned into a hideous expression. Really. Seeing Obadiah's 2.3 appearance, the corner of Tony's mouth suddenly twitched. Farewell, Obadiah. Huh. Hearing Tony's words, Obadiah was stunned for a moment. Before he could understand what Tony meant, a red ray shot out from below, hit him instantly, and penetrated directly. Obadiah's chest. Gingo. The battle is over. Seeing Obadiah's body collapsed, Joan's face became serious. The Iron Man 1 plot is over, and Tony's benefits are almost taken at this stage. Joan's development plan is about to start. A day later, Jones was in his rented apartment in New York. Dot dot dot. I'm not hero material, I've got so many personality flaws, and I've created so much chaos for everyone. The truth is, I'm Iron Man. Staring straight at the scene on TV, when Jones saw Tony announce his news, and then a group of reporters rushed directly in front of him, Jones couldn't help but a smile appeared on his face, and then picked up the the phone made a call. Hey. Mr. James, I wonder if you're watching TV. Yes. Tony announced that the newspaper has been printed. It can be published directly, so it's okay to give me a period of paid leave. I know that all I give you are videos, we are a newspaper, but it's okay to cut out a few pictures from the videos and publish them. That's all sales, oh six photos of Tony Stark's embarrassment when he was researching steel armor, I believe the American people will like to see such photos. Oh. Those few videos are enough to last you for days. Okay. During the two-month vacation, I will provide you with other news about Tony, thank you, Mr. James. Quickly hung up the phone, turned around and picked up a notebook on the bed next to him, Joan's expression gradually became serious. He casually turned the notebook to the first page, and there were only a few words written by Jones on it. New York Gerben College, Dr. Samuel Stern, Mr. Blue, Green Titan Serum. Also, the name that was deliberately blacked out by Jones, Evil. Staring straight at the two evil spirits, Jones frowned, and couldn't help murmuring softly, the first goal of the plan is so fierce. Hey, there is no way, this should be the only chance right. It looks like we have to make a move this time. Shaking his head lightly, Jones directly turned on the kaleidoscope and placed the notebook in a different space. 
The things recorded in this book belong to the kind that must never be seen by others. Putting the notebook away, Jones picked up the phone next to the bed again and dialed Tony's number directly. Hey, Tony, how does it feel to be in the spotlight? Hearing the noisy voice on the other side through the phone, Jones couldn't help showing a look of schadenfreude. It seems that you haven't left yet, the TV signal here is cut off. Yes. Hearing what Jones said, Tony responded directly, I think I can still adapt to the crowd of these reporters, after all, I have experienced so many times before. Hey. Don't put the microphone in my mouth romance. Which TV station reporter are you? I will remember you. After more than a minute of confusion, the surroundings suddenly became quiet, and at this time, Tony's voice finally sounded again. I just got in the car, I have to admit that the reporters this time were a bit too enthusiastic. Maybe you can get used to it in the future. Hearing Tony's words, the corners of Joan's mouth couldn't help but twitch. Okay, I want to ask you something, is the US military still working on the super soldier program? Jones. Hearing Joan's words, Tony over there was taken aback, and his whole person instantly became serious, where did you hear this news? Half a year ago, there seemed to be a report about the bombing at Carver University, and some people saw the green monster, but these reports can no longer be found. If I remember correctly, Carver University seems to have a relationship with the military. Cooperation. Okay Jones, I advise you not to study this matter. This is the restricted area of that old guy Ross. If you mess with him, I can't keep you. Hearing Jones' words, Tony's tone became anxious. Stand up. I'm sensible. Hearing Tony's words, Jones hurriedly said, don't worry, nothing will happen. That's good. Hearing what Jones said, Tony paused slightly, and suddenly said, Jones. J-A-R-V-I-S said that you drove away your steel armor yesterday when you were in Washington. Tony. I'm not you. Hearing Tony's question, Jones' tone didn't change at all. If I drive that thing flying around Washington, I guarantee I'll be shot down. The kid doesn't have the ability of J-A-R-V-I-S. I just used it to drive to 590 in the suburbs of Washington, and then drove there. Okay. I should be glad that you didn't waste too much time, otherwise we might not be able to talk here today. Hearing Jones' explanation, Tony changed the subject directly without further questioning. Tony knew that Jones had been avoiding exposing his extraordinary places. Although he couldn't understand Jones' thoughts, Tony would not push Jones too much. Don't worry, I remember that I saved your two lives yesterday, so you don't need to remind me. Laughing, Jones said directly, Okay, I have something to go out, you can clean up the mess over there. Okay, bye. After hanging up the phone with Tony, Jones opened his see-through eyes, and his eyes scanned the surroundings a few times. The number of agents has increased to six. Is S.H.I.E.L.D. really starting to suspect me? A thought flashed in his mind, Jones pushed the door and walked downstairs, if you have any doubts, just doubt it. As long as there is no evidence, you can't take any special action against them. When you get the evidence, I will have the power to talk to you directly. As soon as he went downstairs, Jones got into an agent's taxi directly. Go Bang Academy. Okay, sir. Hearing Tony's words, the taxi driver responded, started the car directly, and drove in the direction of Gabang College. A few minutes later, Jones turned his head to look at the agent beside him, with a puzzled look on his face. He remembered that this agent was the daily bugle that he took him to when he first came to New York. However, I don't know if it's his own illusion, Jones always feels that the agent looks at him from time to time, there is always a feeling of, resentment. This guy, can't he be gay? A thought flashed through his mind, and Jones subconsciously sat aside a little. He was planning to turn this guy's hypnotic ability into his own just now, but now it's the same, uh. I still don't want to. Jones didn't know, he really wronged the agent. This agent is Martin. After Jones successfully applied for the job at the Daily Horn, he was ordered by Phil Coulson to monitor Jones. However, the day after he received the assignment, Jones went directly to live with Tony, and this stay lasted for a month. Tony's villa is not only a restricted area for killers, it is extremely difficult for agents like Martin to enter Tony, let alone monitor the people inside. He intends to temporarily suspend the mission, but the behavior of Jones going to live with Tony also means that Jones has the value of being monitored, 
or in other words, he must monitor Jones to find out why faith is valued so much by Tony. There are many ways to repay the grace of saving life, but for a person like Tony, taking the benefactor home is not an advisable behavior. Then, the result was very clear, the poor Agent Martin couldn't get close to Tony's villa at all, and was left hanging outside for more than a month. At the moment, he saw Jones again, but he couldn't complain at all. He didn't think there was any resentment in his heart. From Jones' apartment to Gabang College, Jones and Agent Martin spent the time in such a silent atmosphere, until the taxi heard the entrance of Gabang College. After paying the money and getting out of the car, Jones let out a long breath, put aside the depression in the taxi, and walked towards the grid students. Dr. Samuel Stern is a PhD in the Department of Cell Biology at Gerbank College, and one of the most in-depth research on cell biology in the United States. At the same time, he is also the Mr. Big Boss. And now, he's an important hospital in Jones' initial plans. Hello. Standing quietly in front of the doorman, Jones took out his press card from his pocket and handed it over, and at the same time said softly, I'm Jones, a reporter from the Daily Bugle. I would like to interview Dr. Samuel Stern of your university. Reporter. Hearing what Jones said, the guard was stunned. Has Stern published any new papers recently? I haven't heard of it. While muttering, the guard directly took out the press card in Jones's hand, and then took out his mobile phone to scan the press card. After a while, the guard looked down at his mobile phone, then handed the press card to Jones, and said softly, the press card is real, but I still want to ask Dr. Stern if he has time now. Okay, sorry to trouble you. Hearing what the doorman said, Jones nodded lightly, with a gentle smile on his face. After about two or three minutes, the doorman hung up the phone and said to Jones, You are lucky, Dr. Stern is free now, and he is in his own laboratory. You can find it by asking in the Department of Cell Biology. Up. Okay. Nodding slightly, Jones walked directly into the academy. Fifteen minutes later, outside Samuel Stern's research room, dong dong dong, several knocks rang from the door. Come in. Hearing the voice inside, Jones raised his mouth, pushed open the door and walked into Stern's research room. You are the reporter who wants to interview me. Seeing Jones who pushed the door in, Stern, who was sitting on the chair, got up and greeted him. I remember that I haven't published any papers in the past six months. There will be reporters coming to interview me. Hey. Your pupils are actually red. There are also patterns, this is true. Looking straight into Jones' eyes, Stern's voice became weaker and weaker, and finally there was no sound at all. Glancing at Stern with blank eyes, Jones raised the corner of his mouth, turned around and closed the lab staff, and at the same time said softly, Dr. Stern, please find a place to sit down yourself. Exclamation mark quote. Yes. Hearing Jones' words, Stern's eyes were still confused, but he walked to the side sofa and sat down. Dr. Stern. Before walking to Stern, Jones said softly, You are the world's top cell biologist, okay Zhao, I wonder if you have studied gamma rays woolen cloth. Gamma rays. Hearing what Jones said, Stern murmured softly, and a look of doubt appeared on his face. That's right. Gamma rays. Gamma rays are extremely lethal to cells. You are a top expert in cell biology. You must have studied gamma rays, right? With a leisurely smile on his face, Jones took a step forward. Step by step, he led the topic in the direction he wanted. I don't know if there is anyone who can survive the exposure of a large amount of gamma rays. If there is, it is definitely a huge breakthrough in medicine. Some. Hearing Jones' last words, Stern's whole spirit became active, and a look of excitement appeared on his face. Seeing Stern's appearance, Jones couldn't help being taken aback, and then hastily increased the output of chakra to stabilize Stern's state. Dr. Stern. Staring straight at Stern in front of him, Jones tried his best to soften his tone, trying to appease the agitated Stern. Dr. Stern, don't get agitated, don't get agitated. Quote. Under the control of Sheringan, Stern finally regained his composure slowly. Seeing the relaxed Stern, Jones also relaxed a lot. Although Sheringan's ability is very strong, Jones doesn't know any illusions, so he can only directly use Sheringan's ability to directly hypnotic ability. This situation is fine when facing most people, but it is not so easy when facing people with high IQs like Stern. 
Acquiring a lot of knowledge and conducting countless researches can be regarded as a way of exercising mental power. When the mental power is strong, it will be difficult for him to acquire hypnotic ability. With a light breath, Jones said directly, Dr. Stern, take it easy and tell me the situation of those 970 people. I don't know. Hearing what Jones said, Stern was stunned for a moment, and couldn't help showing a tangled look on his face. He contacted me online, I called him Mr. Lou, and he called me Mr. Mr. Lan, according to him, he was irradiated by a large amount of gamma rays, his body has problems, he will turn into a monster with huge amounts of green, and the whole person will lose his mind. He will become a monster who knows how to destroy. Very good. Dr. Stern, if you can solve his physical problems, it will definitely be an unprecedented breakthrough. Yes, I'm helping him study his physical problems. But there hasn't been any progress recently. When he said this, Stern's face was full of disappointment. So, how far has your research progressed? Are there any breakthroughs? He sent me his blood sample, it just arrived yesterday, and I haven't started the research yet. Really? Hearing Stern's words, Age Jones was taken aback, and a look of excitement instantly appeared on his face. Yes, recently I have turned down all my courses, and I am going to study his blood samples exclusively. Very good. Suppressing the excitement in his heart, Jones tone regained his composure. Dr. Stern, do your best to research and copy that blood sample, and then let Mr. Green come to meet you. Okay. I understand. I will do my best to research and copy blood samples, and then let Mr. Green come to meet me. Hearing Jones' words, Stern murmured subconsciously, but there was a trace of determination in his eyes. Mr. Stern. Staring straight into Stern's eyes, the three hooks in Jones' eyes began to spin rapidly. Remember, I am here this time to imagine you applying for the publication of your previous paper Quan. I wanted to publish an article based on that paper, but you rejected my request, and then I just left. Yes. With a slight nod, Jones immediately released the state of Sheringen, and his eyes immediately returned to normal. Dr. Stern. Don't forget to, research and replicate that serum. While speaking, Jones also walked to the door of the research room, pushed the door open and walked out. With the sound of the door being closed, Stern's whole body trembled, and his eyes instantly became clear again. As soon as he recovered, Stern subconsciously looked around a few times, and a look of doubt appeared on his face. But at the next moment, Stern rushed directly towards the interior of the research room as if something important had suddenly sounded. Jones did not control Stern. For a top scientist like Stern, forcibly controlling him will only obliterate his spirituality, and give him a strong hint in his heart, so that he can't wait to conduct research, benevolent. Quickly walking out of Gabang College, Jones took a taxi and walked directly to where he lived. As the taxi started slowly, Jones glanced casually across the gate of Gabang College, but just in time to see two agents approaching the guard. Go and ask as much as you want. Even if you want to break your head, you will never know what I want to do. With a look of disdain in his eyes, Jones turned his gaze directly to the front. Then, the taxi speeded up and took Jones away from Gabang University. According to the plot in the original book, in about half a month, Banner will return to the United States, and then fight the army at Carroll University, and take his girlfriend to the deep mountains and old forests. After that, they will go back to New York and go to Gerbank College to find Stern. Then, there is the most exciting Green Titan battle in Invincible Hulk. Hulk vs. Evil. And Jones' goal, is evil. To be fair, Jones doesn't think he can defeat any of them, even the evil ones whose strength cannot be enhanced by anger. But Hulk was able to beat him. In the original book, Hulk even almost killed evil directly. But at the last moment, Evil was left alive, and Jones' target was Evil who was dying at that time. As for how to break through the Evil Spirit's defense and kill it, Jones has already planned in his mind. Half a month. Jones only gave himself half a month, no matter what, he had to raise his chakra to the level where he could use the divine power before the Green Titan battle, even if only once. Five days later, Dr. Stern's laboratory in the Department of Cell Biology, Gerbank College. Stern hypnotic ability again, Jones didn't talk too much nonsense, and directly let Stern lead him to the interior of the research room. Stern's state is not very good. 
He has lost a lot of weight after several days of continuous research day and night, but his mental state has always been in a state of excitement. Even in Joan's hypnotic ability next, Stern's state is not as dull as the first time. I started with white mice, but they all died, so I started using larger animals, and to be honest, I've only recently started working with gamma rays, so I'm not particularly proficient in this area, I don't know determine whether Mr. Green's blood is more important or the gamma ray exposure is more important in the experiment. Quickly describing his experiment process, Stern led Jones directly into the innermost room of the laboratory. Instead of following Stern directly into the room, Jones stood at the door of the room, glanced inside, and couldn't help showing a look of admiration on his face. In just five days, Stern actually produced so much Banner's blood. Following Jones' line of sight, there were five or six display cabinets in the room, each display cabinet had five floors, and several bags of blood copied by Stern were hung on each floor. Just a cursory look, there are no less than two or three hundred bags of blood in the room. Is this all that person's blood? Turning to the nearest display case, Jones couldn't help asking softly. That's right. Nodding excitedly, Stern's face was full of excitement. The samples he sent were too few, so I concentrated them and made more. As long as the research continues, the blood there are infinite possibilities. Infinite potential. These gamma technologies, I can find hundreds of antidotes in them, making human beings completely immune to various diseases. Really. It's amazing. Hearing Stern's words, Jones casually responded, but his eyes were full of disdain, jokingly, these are Bruce Banner's blood, although they are all diluted, but if it's just used to make medicine, it's a bit of a waste. Dr. Stern. Withdrawing his gaze from the display cabinet, Jones walked directly towards Stern. Jones said softly, pause the research on these blood, and start the blood replication work, 1% to 3%, make 200 servings, and then make a few bags of 50%. Huh. Hearing what Jones said, Stern was stunned for a moment, and his eyes could not help showing a look of struggle. This blood is enough for research, and it is a waste of time to make blood. It is time to start researching. No. Not enough. Hearing Stern's words, Jones stepped forward and pushed several display cabinets in the room together. The next moment, Jones' eyeballs moved, and the kaleidoscope Sharingan instantly opened, and then Jones directly absorbed all the display cabinets gathered together into the different space, and finally left only one display cabinet with the fewest blood bags in the room. After finishing all this, Jones has not closed the kaleidoscope Sharingan, staring straight into Stern's eyes, Jones whispered, Look, there is only so much blood, how can it be enough for research? According to what I just said make a lot of blood. Tell me, how long will it take? It will take a week at the earliest. Okay. Just one week. The kaleidoscope pattern in his eyes turned slightly, and Jones murmured in a low voice, I will come to you again in a week, for an interview, when the time comes. I hope Dr. Stern will not refuse. Definitely not. Hearing what Jones said, Red's eyes flashed, and he said softly, how could I refuse a young man who likes cell biology like you? That's good. The corner of his mouth slightly raised, and Jones walked directly to the direction outside the laboratory, then see you in a week, Dr. Stern. After the words fell, Jones also walked out of the door of the research room. Still accompanied by the sound of the door closing with a, bang, Stern's eyes instantly regained clarity. Glancing around, Stern's eyes flashed, and without saying anything, he walked directly towards the experimental bench. As soon as he left Stern's research room, Jones immediately closed the kaleidoscope Sharingan, and carefully sensed that there was only half of the chakra left in his body, and Jones couldn't help showing a helpless look on his face. The amount of chakra in his body is already much higher than when he first obtained it, but even so, opening the kaleidoscope, Using the pupil technique once, and using the kaleidoscope to perform the illusion technique once, it consumes a lot of energy for such a simple thing. Half the chakra. Thinking of Obito's pupil technique in the original book as if it didn't consume chakra, Jones couldn't help feeling envious. But, thinking of hundreds of bags of serum in a different space, the corners of Jones' mouth can't help but twitch. Although I don't know what the effect of using these things will be, but, it should improve my chakra a lot. After leaving Gabang University, Jones went straight back to the apartment. Now is not the best time to act, and the chakra he consumed will take some time to recover. And, 
Jones hasn't forgotten the agents who are watching him. At around two o'clock in the morning that night, Jones, who had been lying on the bed peacefully, suddenly turned over and stood up directly from the bed. Putting on a suit of pure black clothes quickly, Jones made a dodge and walked directly to the door. There is one outside the window, one downstairs, and one at the stairway. There are only three agents watching at night. How can so few people keep an eye on me? Jones glanced around the apartment, with, eight or nine zero, eyes there was a hint of a smile involuntarily. Quietly opening the door, Jones walked straight across the corridor, and opened the window on the corridor of the apartment building. Then, Jones turned over and jumped out of the window, stepped on the wall and ran downstairs. Running quickly on the straight wall, Jones really wanted to shout out, this feeling of stepping on the wall and running down is definitely not something that can be imagined under normal circumstances. Simply evading the agent's detection, Jones took out the steel armor from the different space after running two streets, and rushed towards the destination quickly. Clinton Prison, located in Danamora, New York, was built in 1865 and is the prison with the strictest security measures in New York State. Definitely, this so-called strictest prison is only for common prisoners. Some criminals with special abilities will be imprisoned in other places, and in some places, there are even existences that common people can't think of. And as it should be, in front of some people with special abilities, this prison seems to be half defenseless, for example, Jones. An hour and a half later, Jones quietly returned to his apartment. As soon as he entered the room, Jones fell directly on the bed and fell into a deep sleep instantly. Under the hazy moonlight, he could still clearly see Jones' pale face. This trip was really tiring, Jones is now in a semi-overdrawn state, and the chakra in his body is almost exhausted, and he almost can't even step on the wall. During this hour and a half, Jones used the blur ability for nearly two minutes, and kept using Sangoyu's hypnotic ability ability. He also worked hard to avoid being discovered by people and surveillance, but fortunately, all these hard work are useful. He slept until 12 o'clock in the noon, until he was so hungry that Jones slowly opened his eyes and got up from the bed. Stepping to the window, Jones looked up at the sun hanging high in the sky, a wry smile appeared on the corner of his mouth, he can't do this in the future, nothing happened, if someone entered his room yesterday, even if he directly took the the gun shot himself, and Jones didn't even know who did it. But, it's better to sort out yesterday's harvest now. A smug look appeared on his face, and the lines of the kaleidoscope appeared directly in Jones' eyes, and along with the translucent spiral ripples, Jones disappeared directly in the room. In the different space of the kaleidoscope Sheringen. The structure of this different space is divided into regions, surrounded by pitch black, and nothing can be seen, just like a black hole that swallows everything. Jones also tried to explore what kind of existence there was before, but every time when Jones approached the edge, there would be a feeling of panic in his heart, which made Jones flinch. The middle part of the different space is a column of cuboids. Jones doesn't know what material these columns are made of, and they are extremely tough. Even Jones tried his best, but he couldn't destroy them a bit. And it is these pillars that divide the space into different areas, large and small, and the largest is the pillar in the middle. Jones' iron armor, Banner's serum, were placed on this area by Jones. In addition to the armor and serum, there are more than 20 adult males in a coma in this area. They are of different heights, fat and thin, ages and file sizes. The only common feature is probably the orange prison uniforms on their bodies. These people are the harvest of Jones' hard work at night. John Smith, five years ago, killed his colleague because of a quarrel, and then killed two passers-by who witnessed his atrocities. Tia Brown, a human trafficker, sold nearly 200 babies and women. Rigo Garcia, a murderer. Dixie Miller. 23 prisoners, each of whom committed murder, and murder, human trafficking and other evil deeds, when seeing their criminal records, Jones kept thinking, why is there no death penalty in the United States? Or, why there is no death penalty for 0.4 common people in the United States? For Jones, each of these people is enough to be shot for five minutes, and what they actually get is life imprisonment at the worst. There are even a few of them who only need to be locked up for more than 10 years before they can be released from prison. Up. What the U.S. government thinks Jones doesn't know, but since these people have fallen into Jones' hands, then just accept it obediently. 
A cold light flashed in his eyes, and Jones walked directly to the display cabinets next to the steel armor in the past, there is Banner's serum. Standing quietly in front of the display cabinet, Jones kept scanning the display cabinet, with a thoughtful look on his face. To be honest, Jones never considered injecting himself with Banner's serum, even if it would make him stronger the fastest, he never did. The ability of the serum is very strong, but the side effects are not weak at all. Injecting the serum will greatly expand the negative emotions in the heart. In the end, either be controlled by desire like evil, or be on the verge of losing control at any time like Banner. Definitely, most importantly, that's not the way Jones is going. The corner of his mouth twitched slightly, and Jones stretched out his hand to explore. He then took out a bag of blood marked with a concentration of 10% soil from the display cabinet, turned around and went to the other side to a group of criminals and walked past the hospital. Sanguyu's eyes were fixed on a criminal on the ground, and Jones said softly, T. Brown. It's time to wake up after sleeping for so long. As Jones' voice 06 sounded, the criminal named Taya Braun suddenly trembled, and he woke up in a daze. This, where is this? You, is it you? Subconsciously glanced around, a trace of confusion appeared on Brown's face, but when he turned his gaze to Jones, suddenly, his pupils shrank suddenly, and his face was full of horror. It seems that I have left a bad impression on you. Seeing the expression of Taya Brown, the corners of Jones' mouth rose, but his eyes were full of coldness. With these heinous criminals, Jones didn't use much gentle methods. Not wanting to continue talking nonsense with him, Jones stretched out his hand and threw the blood in his hand directly onto Brown's body. Drink it. What? Hearing what Jones said, Brown was taken aback. Looking down at the blood bag in his arms, Brown's face was full of resistance. Forget it, I shouldn't be talking nonsense to you. Seeing Brown's resistance, the corner of Jones' mouth twitched, and the three hooks in his eyes immediately began to spin. Tia Brown, look at me. Hearing what Jones said, Brown was taken aback, and subconsciously looked up at Jones. The next moment, Er Lang's eyes immediately became hollow. Drink it. This time, Bu Lang didn't refuse at all, and picked up the blood bag in his arms, Bu Lang opened it directly and drank it down. Half a minute later, Jones looked down at Taya Brown's body on the ground, and a look of helplessness appeared on his face. The gamma radiation in Banner's blood serum was too strong, even with a concentration of just over 1%, it could directly poison a strong man to death. Did you drink too much? A thought flashed in his mind, Jones turned around and walked towards the display cabinet again. After about a quarter of an hour, a criminal named Dixie Miller was panting heavily on the ground, his clothes seemed to be wet with sweat, and his face was full of fear. He was the first person to survive and the fifth person to be experimented on by Jones. 1.28%, one-sixth bag of serum, the experimental subject survived, and the strength of his body has increased. A thought flashed through Jones' mind, and Jones took a quick step forward, kicking Dixie M. Isla was kicked and flew out. Flying two or three meters into the air, Dixie Miller got up quickly as soon as he landed on the ground, and directly locked his sight on Jones. Go to hell. With a roar, Dixie Miller rushed towards Jones directly, and punched Jones in the face with a fist. Quietly watching Dixie Miller rushing towards him, Jones still had a calm look on his face. And just when Dixie Miller was about to rush to Jones, Jones kicked him out without saying a word, kicking him out again. This time Jones played a heavy hand, and even used some chakra. If this foot fell on the common, he would have to lie in the hospital for at least half a year. Afterwards, Jones' perspective I-817 was opened, and he directly observed the situation in Dixie Miller's body. The ribs, the internal organs, are all uninjured, only a few blood vessels are torn, and the constitution is at least three times that of the common people. It's almost three times more than when I didn't use chakra. With a soft murmur in his mouth, Jones couldn't help showing a look of surprise on his face, it's just a little serum injected. If I didn't use the special ability, I would probably be punched to death by Hulk right away. Just as Jones was thinking, Dixie Miller on the ground got up again and rushed towards Jones. With a glint in his eyes, Jones once again threw Dixie Miller's hypnotic ability in a bag of serum with a concentration of 2.58% over him, drink, one part of wood. Hearing what Jones said, Dixie Miller nodded obediently, 
opened the blood bag and took a big gulp. In just a few seconds after he swallowed the serum in his mouth, the muscles all over Dixie Miller suddenly began to twitch strangely. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.